بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد في الحديث عن ابي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه قال النبي صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وقال الاخر والله ما كانت لي بنت عم كانت احب احب الناس الي وفي روايه كنت احبها كاشد ما يحب الرجال النساء فاردتها على نفسها فامتنعت مني حتى المت بها سنه من السنين فجاءتني فاعطيتها عشرين و100 دينار على ان تخلي بيني وبين نفسها ففعلت حتى اذا قدرت عليها وفي روايه فلما قعدت بين رجليها قالت اتق الله ولا تفض ولا تفض الخاتم الا بحقي فانصرفت عنها وهي احب الناس الي وتركت الذهب الذي اعطيتها اللهم ان كنت فعلت ذلك ابتغاء وجهك ففرج عنا ما نحن فيه فانفرجت الصخره غير انهم لا يستطيعون الخروج منها الى اخر الحديث او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم الخير بك نستعين وبك نستعين وبك نستعين يا فتح from this long hadith of Hazrat Abdul Rahman Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu we were discussing the dua of the second individual the second individual he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in my life i had a cousin sister who i was very attracted to and i had a muhabbat and love just the way a husband has for his wife and i was looking for an opportunity to express this love and once she did fall into a difficult situation she came to me for help and i said okay and i agreed on the condition that she allows me to complete and fulfill my desire out of need she agreed when the time came to give the help and the support and the money to hand over the money she gave herself to me there was nothing in between and i was ready to fulfill my desire just the way a husband does with his wife i was sat between her legs and she reminded me of allah, of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so one quality we discussed it was about taqwa and the second quality we learned from this dua and from this sentence of ittaqillaha wa la tafuddha al-khatam illa bihaqqi is about modesty and haya modesty ibn al-qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi as you discussed he divided into two sections one is haya min allah from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have haya haya ul jinaya haya ul jinaya is referring to haya of guilt that when a person does a sin when he commits a sin when he carries out those actions which is forbidden he feels guilty second quality second uh, category and second type was haya ul taqsir where a person has this feeling of not able to carry out the deed completely a person prayed the salah and he made dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that i have done a deed, deed, good deed i have prayed the salah but there will be deficiency in my salah so this is one category the other category was haya ul karam and there are other categories as well haya ul karam is when a person realizes that even though i am day in day out sinning away but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still showering down his blessings upon me the second type of haya is haya ul fitri haya ul fitri meaning haya min al nas haya ul fitri is something what we have through nature allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naturally has given this sort of haya and this type of haya now again this has been divided into different categories one of them is haya in the way of speaking haya in the way of speaking is that a person he chooses words very carefully he uses the correct terms he uses the correct words when he is addressing a person who is older than him he uses the correct terms the respectful words when he is addressing somebody younger than him again he is merciful and kind to that person who is younger than him when he is addressing his teacher he addresses the teacher he addresses the ustad he addresses the alim in a correct word correct label and if he's addressing his students again he chooses his words correctly if he's talking to his own family members 
He uses correct words there. He uses polite, you know, uses words of politeness and kindness. And when he's speaking to a stranger, again, he uses words carefully. Now, it shouldn't be such as some people say that the husband outside the home is like a mouse, very quiet. But when he comes into the home, he's like a lion. So in front of strangers, he's very polite and very you know, nice and gentle. He goes to the cashier and the female is there and he's talking very politely and thank you and nice, and, you know, good evening and good morning and using these sort of terms. But as soon as he comes home, he's a completely different person. That politeness and that kindness, everything is left in the store and he comes home and he's a completely different person. So that's the thing that a person needs to work on. So the haya in way of speaking. So we speak in the correct way, correct form. So this applies for both male and female. So when a male is addressing somebody, whoever he's addressing, whoever he's speaking to, he has to make sure that he uses the correct words. And again, when the female is using, uh, speaking to a uh, male for a reason, he uses the words correctly and uses the terms correctly. Now this also uh, refers to the tone of speaking. How you speak. How you speak, is it low, is it uh, high, is it harsh, is it sweet, etc. This also falls into this. So when a female is at home, as far as I remember, the Mawlana Sulaiman Parliament put Ahmad Barakatum when he used to do his tafsir, as far as I remember, he mentioned that the women of the people that where he comes from, when somebody knocks on the door and there's no male in the home and they had to open the door, they would speak very stern and harsh and you know, solid. There wouldn't be any polite words because then the person who's come, the stranger is there. You know, if you're going to start using politeness, it's possible that the shaitan will come into the person's mind and will you know, to take that person astray. So use harsh words, harsh term, harsh tone. In that way, the shaitan won't make that person inclined towards the other person. So this is one uh, haya, haya of in the way of speaking. The second haya, as we say, modesty, generally the person who use the word modesty generally refers to the word in clothing. However, as we mentioned, the modesty, not just referring to clothing, modesty, modesty takes a lot of things in. The way we speak, the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we address all of these calls in, calls in there. Now, haya in clothing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran that Ya Bani Adam. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is talking to the children of Adam alayhi salatu salam. So this takes in the male, the female, it takes in the believers, it takes in the non-believers, every single person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just addressing the human being. He says, Ya Bani Adam, qad anzalna alaykum libasa yuari sawatikum warisha. That, O oh, people of Adam, or children of Adam, we have sent down upon you, we have revealed to you, we have given to you, we have blessed with you with a blessing. And that blessing is libas, clothing. Two benefits have been mentioned in this verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Libas, yuari sawatikum. This is something that you are able to cover your satar and your aura with, cover your body parts with. So now this is addressed to all human beings. Religious, non-religious, Muslim, non-Muslim, address everybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this ni'mat of clothes that you have, one of the benefits is to conceal your aura, conceal your private part, conceal your body. So this is one benefit. Second, warisha. As long as this, along with this uh, body, covering your body, uh, covering your aura, covering your satar, it will help you to keep yourself warm. It will help you in the time when the uh, weather is hot or cold. At the same time, it will also help you to adorn yourself. Warisha is referring to adorning yourself and bring beauty and make you look handsome. However, in the commentary of the Mufti Muhammad, uh, in uh, the Ma'arif al-Quran is written that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has addressed the human beings here. But at the same time, if you look at other creations such as animals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them in such a way that even their Private parts are also covered in such a way. Or most of the private parts are also covered. They've been created in such a way that even their private parts is covered. Or they have a figure, they have, they have a body part, they have the tail, or they have the hair on their body in such a way that even their body parts is also covered. So this is an indication towards this that the aura and the satar should be covered. When we cover the aura, when we cover the satar, then this will, be, bring, the, uh, this will bring goodness in our life. This will bring goodness and it will bring khair in our life. And when a person does not do this, when a person does not cover himself, when a person does not have haya in his life, Imam Qayyim says that 
Haya has no share of humanness other than flesh. A person who carries no haya, a person who carries no haya, a person who does not have any haya, he has no share of humanness other than flesh, blood, and his, experience, uh, his appearance. Likewise, there is no potential for a good person. There is no potential for good in a person. There is no potential for good in a person without haya. If there was no haya, then this quality would not bring a person being a person being uh, kind to his guest, a person being promise, uh, keeping his promise, fulfilling his trust. Meaning, when a person does not have haya, then he doesn't be kind to his guest. He doesn't keep promises. He doesn't fulfill a trust. He doesn't fulfill anybody's needs. He doesn't prefer what's pleasant. He doesn't uh, avoid what's obscene and nudity and etc. He doesn't abstain from fornication. So because of haya, then it brings goodness into a person's life. Because of haya, a person is able to fulfill the obligation. Because of haya, a person is able to fulfill the rights. He's able to keep the kinship. Because of haya, he's being kind to his parents. Like this, the hadith says that um, haya does not bring but goodness. Now when we, uh, uh, there's a hadith, Abdullah ibn Umar anhu that haya and iman are like two wings. It's being paired together. They're being paired together. For example, like two wings. If one is removed, the other one will also be removed. If one is removed, the other one will also be removed. If a person has iman, then that means he should also have haya. If haya is there, this also should also help him to bring strong iman and bring iman and make it stronger. However, this does not mean that when a non-Muslim has haya, he will be given the salvation in the hereafter. This does not mean that if a non-Muslim has haya, this brings salvation in the hereafter. Why? Because the hadith in uh, one of the hadith he said that that every deen, every religion has its unique character. And khuluqul islami al haya. And the unique character of Islam is haya. Unique character of Islam is haya. In another hadith of uh, Bayhaqi, very clear, where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that al haya min al deen. Haya is part of the deen. Then he says, Bal huwa al deen. Kullu. The haya is entire deen. Haya is entire deen. So this is trying to uh, make us understand that if a person has haya, if a non-Muslim has haya, does not mean that he's going to gain salvation the year after. You have to have iman, you have to have this faith in yourself and able to gain salvation in the year after. In one hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said that al-haya'u min al-iman. Al-haya'u min al-iman. Haya is from iman, wal imanu fil jannah. Iman is to will take a person towards jannah. Wal badha'u min al-jafa. Wal badha'u min al-jafa. And vulgar and obscene and um, nudity and uh, evil is from jafa, is from being harsh. And well, jafa'u fin nar. And when a person is being harsh, it's from jahannam. So this is one, one type of haya, haya in clothing. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that a time will come before the day of judgment that, you know, people will be such, especially women that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is referring to, that kasiyatin, ariyatin, that they will be clothed. They will be clothed, but despite this, they will be still be naked. And in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would not understand this. And that how is it possible that a person is clothed but still naked. Imam Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi, he explains this hadith that the time will come that where people will be such that they will be semi-nude. We mean there will be semi-nude parts of the body will be covered whereas the other parts of the body will remain exposed or they will be wearing such clothing that they will be transparent or there will be such clothing that the skin color will be visible or there will be such clothing that the body shape will be, uh, will be visible and will be um, possible to be seen. So this is the, the hadith the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. Now in the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says that they will not be able to enter Jannah. That women who wear such clothing, that they are semi-nude, they are transparent, their body figures are shown, or you know, they're, wearing in, uh, they're wearing such clothing that they are, but they are still naked, then the hadith Nabi, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith says that they will not even enter into Jannah. They will not enter into Jannah. Not only that, they will not be able to perceive the order of Jannah. They will not be able to smell the order of Jannah. And the, in the hadith of Muatta and Malik, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that the fragrance of Jannah can be, set, you know, smell and can be sent from 500, uh, 500 years from there. From 500 years. That if a person will not be able to even, uh, the, uh, with the woman who's wearing such clothing, will not be able to s smell the fragrance of Jannah from that much, that far, from that far as well. So this is one thing that we need to keep in our mind that 
having haya is not um, uh, it, it covers a lot of things haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haya in our clothing haya in our speaking haya in our talking haya and another haya in our days is online haya online haya online could refer to what we are, what we search and what we watch what we look at what we you know um, search and what we go through on the web uh, on, online and at the same time it also refers to social media but what we post on our social media on our profiles on our pages all of this will also be covered and if a person is bahia if a person has modesty then he will be very careful he will be very careful in many things and this will bring goodness in a person's life we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the understanding of this haya now the haya if you look into the Arabic uh, language, it refers to life. It refers to life. Meaning when a person has haya in his life, then he will have moral in his life. He will have moral and values in his life. When a person is devoid and when a person doesn't have haya, then there's no morals in his life. There's no limits in his life. And now we see this nowadays as well, that some people are such that they themselves are corrupted and they're corrupting other people's minds. They have no limits in their life. They don't have any morals in their lives. And they're going beyond, you know, any uh, understanding, any imaginations of any humans. Until now, we didn't even, we couldn't even think that, you know, there will be people with such behavior and such attitudes and etc. That they are not just corrupting themselves, they are corrupting the children that are coming in the future. You know, they have no sort of limits in their lives. So when a person has haya, and the other thing that haya brings, one of the great benefit of haya which Islam emphasizes upon is family unit. Family unit. Alhamdulillah, in our, generally in our families, we have the father, the mother, the grandfather, the grandfather, you know, the parents, grandparents, uncle, and everybody is all united and all together. And when there's no haya, then what will happen is that a male will fulfill his desire with a female. There's no marriage, in, nothing involved. Then there's children born out of marriage. The partner goes in their own way. Now the child is left without, you know, both parents left with one parent as well. Now the child grows up in such a way that there's no support, there's no family unit there. And that is, you know, breaking the unity between the community, is breaking this family unit, and it is breaking the entire nation. And this is something that Islam emphasizes upon, that we need the family unit. And one of the ways to keep this family unit is through haya. So it's important for us as fathers, as mothers, that we ourselves exercise haya. The way we dress, we should be modest. Even at home as well, even at home as well, we should be such in the way that we don't expose our bodies. When we are changing, we should be said that there's nobody else in the home. Or there's no everybody else in our room where we are changing. It shouldn't be said that thinking that inshallah is only my child. It doesn't matter how, you know, it does, how I dress in front of them, my hair is open. It shouldn't be like that. If you look into the life of the Sahaba, that Aisha radiallahu anh is written about her, that after the burial of the Prophet sallallahu had Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, her father in one room, she would say that I would go without you know, covering my, uh, uh, without the niqab, it'd be okay. But once Hadid Umar anhu was buried there, I would never enter that room without covering myself. Even though Hadid Umar anhu is not alive, he's not even in the room, but she would not enter that room without covering herself. When the Prophet ﷺ was there, and the father Hadid Abu Bakr anhu was there, she would cover, she would open her face, it would be okay for her. She would think it is only my father and my, uh, uh, my husband. But when Hadid Umar anhu was buried there, even though he's not alive, she would even, she would even cover herself and uh, pull a uh, 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 cloth, cloth, cloth over herself. This is the hadith of Musnad Ahmad. Uh, Imam Musnad Rahmatullah, Imam Ahmad Rahmatullah has narrated this hadith. And we also hear on the Friday khutbah, very famous, Rahmu Ummati bi Ummati Abu Bakr wa Ashadun fi Amrullah Umar wa Asdaqum Hayawun Uthman. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that from our Ummah, the most honest and the person who has this quality of Hayah is that Uthman radiallahu anhu. That Uthman radiallahu anhu. Again, that Aisha radiallahu anhu narrates in one of the hadith that she says to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi that when Hadad Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, you didn't enter, you didn't move. When Hadad Umar radiallahu anhu entered, you didn't move. But when Hadad Uthman radiallahu anhu, you fixed, when he entered, you fixed the clothing and he sat appropriately. So Hadad Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied that you know, that Uthman radiallahu anhu is such that even the angels have haya of That even angels have haya of him. So why shouldn't I have haya in front of him as well? And there's so many, you know, uh, sayings of the Sahaba and saying of the uh, anbiya, uh, uh, of the um, um, uh, our scholars about haya. So one way to bring, uh, build haya in our life is to understand 
that Nabi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, should be worshipped in such a way that we are able to see him. The quality of the ihsan. That we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to see him. If you're not able to do that, then at least have this in our mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. So this means that, you know, you should ponder upon the, some of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, as samir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing. Al-Basir, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seeing. Al-Muhid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all encompassing, that he has everything encompassed and everything is with him. You know, Hatim, uh, uh, Hatim radiallahu rahmatullahi alayhi says that, you know, if there was a spy sitting next to you, if there was a spy sitting next to you, you would always be on guard. You'll be always on guard. You'll be choosing your words carefully. You'll be very careful with your actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching us. So you should always be on guard then as well. So that's one way. Try to build the quality of ihsan. Another way of bring, bringing this uh, haya in our life is to remember, remind ourselves about the ihsanat and about the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These eyes that we have, utilize them correctly. These ears and these hands and the limbs of our body try to remind ourselves that these are the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One other way of bringing haya is to practice haya. Dress modestly, walk modestly, try it, you know, we should try it. You know, do these things, then inshallah this will be able to help us. Now, in this, we, the, all, the thing also falls in is about fashion. We shouldn't always run after fashion. You know, now, nowadays women, that when they choose in their, even their jubbas is what's in the fashion nowadays. They don't look that, is it tight on my body? Is it revealing? Has it got slits on the side that my trousers and my you know, clothes are sh showing? They don't at times take that into consideration. Whereas that should also be taken into consideration as well. So practice haya. And one other way to understand it is try to read the biographies and the stories of our earlier Muslims by reading their you know, uh, life the haya, how the haya in their, had in their life, this will also help us and be in a good company. Being in good company, inshallah, will also help us. Mujahid rahmatullah alayhi says that if a Muslim does not benefit from uh, his brother, if a person does not benefit from his brother except haya, the only, the only things that he learns from his brother is haya, that is sufficient for him. That is sufficient. He may not learn so much, but if you learn haya from that person, then that you have learned a lot from that person. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give ourselves the understanding of haya and what haya is, give ourselves, our mothers and sisters especially, and our future generation as well, to bring all types of haya, haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, haya from the people as well, bring all these types of haya in their life, and inshallah through this haya, we will be able to bring the goodness that we are you know, uh, waiting for in the community, in our nation as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to bring, uh, as they mentioned, into practice, into our life, and all those who are listening, and the entire Muslim ummah, and entire humanity as well, to give them the understanding of this haya and to bring it into their life. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Jazallahu ala Muhammad wa sallallahu ala wa sallam wa wal. Rabbana taqabal minna inna kanta sallim wa alim wa alina wa nasikana. Wa tub alayna inna kanta tawab wa rahim. Subhanahu rabbika rabbi al-azati ma yasifun. Wa salamun ala muslim. Wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Bi rahmatika ya rahman rahim. Just one announcement, the, the Thursday bayan that we just made of Mufti Mahmoud Bardoli Sahib Dhamad Barakatum is not this Thursday, it shall take place next Thursday, 13th of October. But there was a mistake in the announcement that the bayan of Mufti Mahmoud Bardoli Sahib won't be this Thursday, it's going to be in the next Thursday, inshallah. Jazakumullah.